Have you ever wondered what was out there in the night sky? Stared up at the stars in the hopes of seeing something out of the ordinary? Have you ever heard unexplainable noises coming from a vacant room or watched a shadow cross the wall in front of you? Have you asked yourself if there's life after this one or if you had life before? What about strange creatures that are mythical and elusive? Have you experienced deja vu or felt a prompting to leave because you felt you were in danger? What if tomorrow you were on the fringe? And welcome to another or a special episode of uh, we're just going to call it the What If Tomorrow podcast because I feel this this podcast and this episode is is it deserves to be on both shows um, the preparedness of news and the fringe um, although the more I have looked into it and sharing intel from our guest uh, Frank Jacob uh, welcome Frank by the way before I continue welcome back pleasure to be here thanks thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, it's been what right at right about two months since you were on the first time. Um, a lot has transpired since then. Um, I've been kind of looking at the intel drops and things like that, following it, uh, and that's why I say this is goes on both shows. I mean, automatically, it gets really deep. Uh, it can be dark. It depends on how you look at it. It's gonna it can shake you. Uh, just a kind of a disclaimer, a forewarning. You know, we're not trying to scare people. We're trying to bring you the information as it is. Um, use your own discernment, whether you believe it or not, which to me, it rings a lot of truth. I mean, this really pertains to a lot of the uh, the Great Reset or the Agenda 2030 going on with the uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, Klaus Schwab, all those guys, which I don't believe they're even in control. I don't I believe so either. Uh, looking at all this stuff, I believe it's their, their puppets as well. What 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 do you what's your take on that, Frank? I don't know what to say to that. I think they're very much in control uh, of what they're doing, and I just I think they're they've planned this for many many years, and they've got contingencies. The only thing that might be changing for them is the scheduling. So there's there's a certain stress that comes with upping schedules, and I believe there's an ex, there's a there there is a tempo uh, change that they're trying to advance things along faster than they had originally planned, perhaps. So that would be where maybe there'd be some stressors. But these are people that are, you know, they've been going at this for years, for actually for probably at least a century, you could almost argue. And so, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what they've been working toward. So, and they've got the money, they've got power, the media. If I look at the media reports and just alone in Europe and in Germany, locally where I am, it, it's, you know, you get no idea that there's any kind of a resistance movement going on out there at all. I mean, there's nothing, nothing, not a whisper. <laughs> it's like it's all full steam ahead. They're already making plans for the next, you know, coming lockdown season. They all I fully expect there's going to be, you know, massive waves of sickness because now all the irresponsible holidayers that are out there without their masks and that are spreading it around are just going to get the hammer is going to come down and they're going to be suffering. So they're setting it up. They're doing this preemptive programming. And now, you know, so and I think most people are still, I have to say, unconscious. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just the people that we know that are conscious. We talk to them all the time. So it seems to us like, yeah, there's a few more people on board. But I think large by, by large, uh, by a large majority, the people out there that are walking around are just completely oblivious to the stuff that are they just feel like victims they're probably not happy about it but they kind of feel helpless so the biggest thing that that i feel like what i'm concerned about now is just to get this message out to as many people as possible especially those people who aren't necessarily into conspiracy analysm you know they don't analyze conspiracies or you know the, the more popular term is conspiracy theorists but there's no theory here. This is there are conspiracies out there. This is a conspiracy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you know, I think just to get to people that don't necessarily entertain these ideas is the biggest victory we can have. That means 
a critical threshold of not talking to a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or, or five hundred thousand or a million people in a in a chat, but getting to ten million or to fifty million people, and so that it just it suddenly like people sit up and take notice. It's like what is this? What is going on? Like they've been ignoring it, ignoring it, ignoring. It. All of a sudden, it's like it's like that mosquito that's in the room, you know. <laughs> While you were, you know, distracted, you didn't think about it, right? And all of a sudden, now it's quiet. And all of a sudden, that mosquito's in. Like, what is going on with this mosquito, right? So, we have to be the mosquito in the room. Yeah, <laughs> you feel I mean, like this driving you born right here on your show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, it's a huge hill to climb. Uh, looking at what, what was Gideon saying? Something like 50 million people, minimum. Yeah, that's what he um, says. I, I tend to agree with him. Maybe it's not quite as dire. Maybe 10 is enough. Uh, let's not put a number on it, but let's not stop like we have it under control. Right. Like, uh, what, one thing I don't get into these days is this, we got this mantra. We got this. We got. We don't got it, people. It's like the, the New Agers are sitting on the couch, you know. They're waiting for the Messiah. They're saying, oh, it's already done. You know, we, we've already made it. You know, we're on this timeline to the Golden Age. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that easy. We have to work for it. And part of that working for it means waking up to what's going on and talking to people about it and going, you see it too? Yeah, we see it too. Okay, we're not going to let that happen. And who's doing Wait, that? What I what I find crazy is if you, you talk to people, um, they're, they're, they're always saying, man, there's something happening. There's something big coming or there's something going on. But you bring up a, a subject such as this and they're like, no, I can't be that. They're not right. willing to, to to take a look at it. Why not? Yes, you know, because they're it, looking is... for something outside, some cosmic thing, or some alien landing, or something. Something you know, they've, they've all been groomed by the by the newest Netflix show or whatever they they're watching, right? And it's 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 the thing is, this is it's it's actually quite unspectacular <laughs> to yeah. to, to do the spiritual work to awaken is really unspectacular. It, it just it's it's just observing your it starts by observing your thoughts like what kind of thoughts are going on in your head are they serving you are they useful what are they doing are they bringing you something constructive are they making you feel positive are they making you feel motivated uh you know or are they mostly negative thoughts and they just make you feel like ah you, you can't change it anyway nothing's gonna change everyone's this like you have to monitor your that's the first step that's really unspectacular and the other thing is, like, you know, people hear about financial stuff and banking and they just like they they just nod off because they, they don't want to go there. But the fact is, and we've heard of cryptocurrencies and they've heard of crypto, but crypto never really. I mean, in a way, the, the pioneers of crypto, if everybody would have got in when they did, everyone would be rich, but they didn't. Why? Because they're too lazy or too, it's too complicated or they don't trust it. You know, that's probably the other thing. I'm one of those people that didn't trust it because I figured I've been studying currency for I, one of the first things I got into when I started waking up is the monetary system. You realize the banking, you know, the fiat money and stuff. And then you realize that all those people that invented an alternative monetary system tended to get crushed <laughs> when they got yeah. successful, except crypto. Right. And then everyone says, well, it's because it's blockchain. You can't trade. It's anonymous. It, it does. It's, it's easier than that. The government just signs a decree and says anyone caught with a a dollar, a Bitcoin, trading a Bitcoin faces a $50,000 fine or five years in jail. Basta. You don't need to be decrypted uh, anymore. Right. It's over, right? People are have shown how paranoid they are when the government comes and threatens, like, if you don't get the job, you're not going to go to work. And, you're just, and your employer is going to have the Supreme Court behind them. <laughs> you know, that kind of, that's all they have to do. And people are, will, uh, th this is the test of how... Um, willing you to, are to go to what limit to what length are you willing to go to fight for your sovereignty right how how far are you going to take it and this is where a lot of the you know wake up the, the awakening new age people the freedom movement they cop out because it's, they have no skin in the game as soon as they have to put a little muscle into it they're like oh what i gotta do all that i gotta learn all that you mean i have to spend time i can't watch football or whatever it's like they, i want to go on holidays i've been waiting all year you know Hey, you know, then don't go. Right now we have a, a job to do. Go after. <laughs> You'll have a great world to have a holiday in if we succeed at what we're trying to do here. You know, and that, then you'll have the most amazing, glorious holidays and you won't have to worry about anything when you get back from your holiday. So we have the business to take care of right now. Yeah, I when, when 
because I think I pulled the link off of your Facebook page to uh, the the conversations with Gideon. That was a it's Bill, right? That's that, isn't it, Bill? That is Bill, name? yeah. Bill, Bill yeah. Sweet is his probably not his real name. It's his you know whatever he goes by. Uh, first thing, I mean, I was shocked, you know, because I, I've mentioned you know the ESG, you know the the environmental social governance score, um, and, and this really set it in stone. Although they did apparently. I'm not going to say they changed the name, but I you hadn't heard that uh, because all you're hearing is ESG, and it's what it's sovereign class, common, um, restricted, restricted and quarantined. restricted and quarantined. Um, yeah, and it's crazy to think about it. Really, you know, how are they going to do that with with seven billion people in the world? It, it's hard. They're not going to gonna do it well, but yeah. it's it's going to be a nightmare for everybody. You know, well, it, actually, you know, unless you're sovereign, it's it, yeah. The thing is, the the point is, nobody was supposed to know that there's a sovereign class. That's the, that's the thing. That's what makes this leak different than any other leak out there. This is not about changing to a digital currency. Okay, this is we know they're going to be doing this. They're going to crash the currencies they've already started, and they're going to have a crisis point. There's going to be a crisis that's going to come up, like you know, like the war in the Ukraine is a particular kind of crisis. The COVID pandemic was a crisis. They're good at, they've simulated these in, the, in their war games and their simulation games for years, for decades. They know uh, how to generate a crisis. And they've watched us, they've observed us also, and they've, they've seen how we respond at a certain crisis. And so the first thing that happens is people go in the defensive mode and, uh, and then they come out and there's gonna be some resistors. They know when they come, they know who they are. They know how long they can last. Uh, but basically what happens is that they begin to tighten the noose so that it becomes difficult for you to function unless you follow through with the given set of rules they've given you to play. And in the COVID crisis, that those sets of rules were you can't go anywhere unless you're wearing a mask, for example. Uh, you can't cross the border between Germany and Austria unless you have a COVID test that's done in the last 24 hours, for example. Uh, you can't go and work in your job because the, you know the government is going to give your employer a hard time. And if you do go in, you got to do tests every single day. I mean, these are all things that they throw in. And people that resist, they have a harder time. And there's, there's people that don't resist at all. They just go with it and they go, okay, well, I guess that's what they got to do. Yeah. And those that resist, they'll hold out for a while. But they won't last forever, especially if it comes down to a kind of crisis that they're working on engineering, which is a crisis involving switching over to the great reset the great reset listen to the words right they're going to reset everything this isn't just about a, a virus this is about resetting society they've been planning it they've been writing about it there's books about it they've been studying it they've been doing think tanks they've been doing simulations they're going to bring about a crisis and they can you know they have weapons they have governments they have armies on their side and if people think the army is all the good guys and it's for the people then they're delusional because the armies have, are, have been long since corrupted Otherwise, the armies would have stepped in when Trump was in power, right? right. All that stuff we heard about the army's going to come in, and they never did, okay? They had their chance. Maybe 20 years ago would have been the time, but they didn't do it. The armies are not going to come and save us. The right. only people you know, left to save us are us. <laughs> That's what it comes yeah, down to, right? I, I, I do agree to that. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn because... I'm kind of at a, I know I'm it's at a, a precipice. Hard, dire world, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I'm kind of at a precipice here because I'm a veteran, you know, and and I have tons of respect for anybody that that's that's willing to step forward and serve. I don't care where. Um, so do I, by the way. And and I know you're not dogging on on the military and all that. I, I understand no. fully what you're saying. No, but um, you know that term compartmentalization, right? Yes, absolutely. Right? And you know that, that a lot of the service people have to get the jab right now, yep. right? And you know that they're given a very stringent window of operation. And if they fall outside of that, they face court martial disgrace and all these things. Absolutely. So it always comes down to the character of the people there, not the, necessarily the role they're playing. The military right. have the advantage that they've got access to toys and guns and helicopters and ships and planes and stuff. They could do some serious damage, right? Oh, yeah. If those people wake up and rebel, it's over, right? But yeah. I'm saying, like, how much longer are they going to wait before they're going to rebel? Because now is the time for rebellion. Actually, the time for rebellion was earlier. We don't want to wait till the very last minute. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right? I love the service people, man. Thank God for the service people, right? Yeah. But I feel for them because they're, they're also on the same clincher that the rest of us in, on the outside are. 
Yeah, absolutely. Right? You know, but for the longest time, and, and I'm just watching things, I'm like, you know, the veterans, there's so many millions of veterans. I mean, I, I look at it through the lens of the United States, you know, because that's, that's the world I live in. Uh, and it is a worldwide thing. Um, you know, I can't help, you know, I'm wondering, you know, I mean, what veterans are going to stand up? And you see all this talk. You know, I'll stand up, I'll stand up, but when? When is the time? You know, and that's the thing, there's no organization, because like you were saying on the previous show that I watched you on, I, I, what was the name of that? Watchers um, Talk. Watchers Talk, yeah, really good show. Um, and and they, they made the comment with the military and all that. Well, the military has been co-opted. The, the good people are being drummed out. Yeah. First and foremost, the that's what people need to realize. Yes, and. Yeah. Why would it be any different? It's got to be the right. same. It's the same in every. It doesn't matter what it is, in what area or sector or whatever. People are people. And there's characters, people with character. There's upstanding people. There's courageous people. And there's people who follow orders. And in the society outside of the military, the follow orders people are the first ones to cave in, like I was mm -hmm. describing. And the ones that have character are the ones that say, wait a minute, something doesn't smell right here. We're not doing this. And they yeah. hold up for a while, right? But unfortunately, the military is controlled by certain financial powers that are beyond the scope of even the president, even beyond the scope of the major banks. These are people that are so wealthy, you never see them. These are people that call presidents and chew them out on the phone and say, don't ever waste my time with that stupid petty crap again. Right. right. Those are the kind of people that have that kind of audacity, that they have that kind of power. We have to understand that, that those people are, are out there and those are the string pullers. We don't see them. And they're getting the rest of the people out there and the militaries and, and the government people and the civilian service. They're getting them all you know, under their control. And they're using these fear tactics and they're using this, they're using the stressors like if they starve us, like what did Brad say? We're eight meals away from, yep. you know, from, from rioting, right? Yep. <laughs> and it's and a very good point. It's true, right? People, if they uh, just a day without food, people freak out. But imagine like a week absolutely you know, i fasted yeah. for 15 days before i can make it through 15 <clears throat> days no worries i know i just need some water but i've done it right if i haven't done it and i'm not familiar with it you if you're not familiar with your body and you're not familiar with your consciousness and how much stress you can put yourself through you're going to cave right away yeah absolutely yeah? and, and, you and, know, and, and you're going to feel justified for going to the neighbor with your gun and saying move aside i'm going to get your food i'm sorry my family's life is on the line my baby's got to eat i'm sorry right, right? And you'll kill them if necessary, right? That's right. how this is how people are, and we have to be. Uh, it's it sounds really cruel, but we're talking about the essence here of of existence, the essential mm -hmm. things, right? And and that's why Mark and I do uh, the shows that we do. I mean, we do on the fringe, and and like I said, starting out, this isn't a fringe topic anymore. This is right. this falls right along more for me, the preparedness and news. I mean. That's why I've kind of shifted over, you know, my mind, you know, the first time you were on, I was like, okay, you know, let's, let's talk about, it. let's talk through this. The more I've looked and the more I've researched and, and seen this things that you've posted and all that, I'm like, no, this is real. I mean, it's a punch for me. It's a punch in the gut, that gut level instinct. No, this is real. It's time to fight. It's time to stand up. And, and that's what I feel led to do with this show is to stand up. And this is my way of saying, hey, no, get the word out. Let's make this happen. Um, it doesn't seem like they're even trying to hide it. No. Right. And and I'm sure, like Gideon was saying, uh, I think I read on one of the drops that he's saying, like, they were going to probably soft disclose it anyway at some point because you can't keep this thing a secret forever. No. Right? But, but the thing is, dropping it out there way before they're ready causes of damage <laughs> they're under damage and if you've noticed it alex it's jones damaging. is ignoring the story joe rogan is ignoring the story russell brand is ignoring the story david wilcock is ignoring the story they're just they're just pretending it isn't out there and you would think right. these are the people that have the yeah. reach millions of people they could actually do damage right now right even if their names are listed they, and they've been they've been appearing on the sovereign lists yeah and they've actually been shown to be trading. Now, that still doesn't necessarily mean they're sovereigns. Somebody could be messing with their monies to try and make it look to blackmail them. It doesn't matter. The point is they have an obligation once they've found out about this, like anybody does right now, to talk about it, whether it's true or not, because it's coming in one form or another. 
And if it is in this form, and it's they're talking about you know segregating society on a very deep level. Imagine if you're living in a family, and you're you know and and your your half the family is Q or C, and the other and there's like one or two people that are maybe R, you know, and then. The problem is that the others in the C group are going to be because of AI tracked and re- they're going to realize, hey, they're associating with ours. Right. They get point docked, right? And they get points docked and points docked unless they disassociate. They're going to throw a division between society, between families, between friends, like the way COVID that makes going to, it's going to make COVID look like Disneyland. Yeah. Because it's going to be again down to those life and death things. When you're only getting a thousand dollars a month. And every time, you know, you've been warned that your association with so-and-so speaking out against the system is going to dock you 25 points and take uh, $25 out of your account. How many times are you going to allow that ding to happen when you realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, I'm I'm only going to be able to get so-and-so much every month and I can hardly get by with it. You know, you're going to begin to have to make decisions that you don't want to make. This is Absolutely. where this is what they want. This is the kind of stuff they probably get off on. Well, they're doing it in China. Cheaper. Yeah, I mean, like they've done it in China, and China and Israel. I mean, they've they've done it. They're hardcore. They're doing it. There's no doubt about it. They're they're practice running this stuff right now. And the other thing, the other component to it is the programmable digital currency. That's the that's the real killer, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, I want to get. I'm gonna. I want to have a double uh, Big Mac with blah blah blah. And I was like, nah, your quota is exceeded. You can only have the Bug Burger. <laughs> right. Right. So, I mean, how much longer are people going to they're going to realize, oh, my God, I can like I can only buy what and I can only buy 18 gallons of gas per month. Right. That's going to give them a range of, you know, to work and back. Uh, and, you know, that's about it. So they can't go anywhere. They can't go out driving anymore. They can't go on vacations, can't drive across the state lines anymore. These are the kind of things that are going to start coming. They've been talking about an agenda 21. They, you know, they they tore the guide the Georgia Guidestones down, so people probably aren't looking at that too much right anymore because they right. maybe they were getting too much attention. See, I, I was wanting to ask you what your thoughts are were were, were on that on the, yeah, the thing think, with the uh, yeah. I mean, Andrew, nobody I knows know for sure. Anyone. Brad, I heard say that they actually you see someone run up in a video, but I never saw that. I saw the videos that one of the videos I saw you can see car a car leaving and driving up, but you don't see a person setting a bomb. You just see an explosion. Now, I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. I haven't really followed it day by day. Maybe this mysterious person that set the bomb has shown up. So, yeah, it was either them, was either somebody who set the bomb. I don't know what they were thinking about accomplishing because, in a way, it hasn't stopped anything. Um, but it is an interesting little symbol. And I, and I have to say, it's kind of, it had, I had to smirk when I, when I found <laughs> out. It was like, <laughs> it was like, Okay, cool. I'll take that. You know, I mean, whoever did it, you know, if it was they themselves did it or if it was someone else that did it, it's still going to send a signal out there. It'll help. We can use those things to give us energy, to energize us and to make us feel like there's there's change, there's positive change going on. So, yeah, we'll take it. Absolutely. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what happened. But the, the, the Guidestones really were giving people reason to pause and think more than probably they have been in years before, because in, now that the whole now that Q came and went now that COVID came and went there's a lot more conspiracy minded people out there it's just the upside of whenever something like this happens is that more people wake up and more people have woken up no doubt about it the world the the amount of people that have woken up is by far greater than that 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 existed prior to when Trump became president there's no doubt about this the question is is it enough you know so but I still I'm, you know, I'm a plan B kind of person. I'm not convinced it's enough people. I still see too much ignorance out there and too much resistance. There's certain people I cannot talk about this stuff with ever. I just, if I, if I were to talk about it with colleagues in a certain area of work that I'm in, they would, they would disassociate, you know, without even needing to have the points docked. They would just disassociate because they go, okay, Frank's kind of weird. Like, now I've seen a side of him that I'm not sure is kind of strange, right? So, because you make them feel uncomfortable. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But is that uncomfort because they know it's real? I mean, I'm so, I'm talking on a gut level. I'm not talking yeah. outside looking in. But is it deep down they know it's real, but they're not willing to accept it? In some cases, I think yes. It's there's there's always that uh, certain truth that we all know, which we're unwilling to admit to ourselves. 
But then there's really, you know, something to the fact that there could be clones out there, people that are not really humans. I'm beginning to lean in that direction. Um, I had a friend that unfortunately is no longer with us, but he he had this whole theory about there was only 7% of the people out there were human and the rest were either clones or walk-ins or, you know, not necessarily in the good sense, uh, you know, or cloaked aliens, whatever. He had all these theories. I used to just laugh. But I'm starting to took, take it a little bit more seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I, I, if anything, you know, people have heard us say this many times. From starting this show, you know, almost two years ago to to now, I don't I don't doubt anything anymore. I always try to find a reason to, but I don't doubt anything anymore. There, I think there's always a possibility. Uh, with, with Carrie Ann Fields the other night, we were talking about the, the NPCs, you know, the the people that Not are there. But, yeah. And it, it's the more you look and the more you see. I mean, you're like, well, it's possible. You know, I, I think it's a possibility. I was talking and, to John Nolan about that, and he was saying, yeah, it's really bizarre. If you actually, he actually tried it a couple of times. He walked up to strangers in a mall and engaged them in some like higher level thinking idea on the spot and he just realized that these people are like they were like a uh, 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 completely like <laughs> no response whatsoever they had no clue what how to respond <laughs> nothing clever come back no joke or nothing it was like there is like uh, uh. so i mean yeah it's like it seems like there really are a lot of npcs out there is it is that you know the default i wonder you know because you bring a new idea to somebody i mean you see all these clips of these uh matt walsh and stuff like that asking people questions and then and their immediate reaction is anger i wonder if that's like a default reaction or something like that you know if it is and if it is an npc or whatever if not i mean program. well it's a program yeah. right i mean if somebody does that to me um it has happened to me a couple times in my life actually really um, the first thing that, that happens to me is like now this is interesting <laughs> it's like <laughs> finally like a sign of life out there in the universe right and then right. you know the comeback can be fun you can have fun with these people. And I've had a few of those encounters and it's been boosting for both people. It's like, oh my God, like there's others out there that are awake. But, you know, but by far and large, unfortunately, still most of them, you know, I guess it's hard to tell with numbers unless you actually did a test. But what's interesting on that, on that subject is many people get asked about what is July 4th, for example, Americans, yeah. right? Just that's scary. It is. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Like that is. I've is seen very that. scary. When like I'm a Canadian, right? And I lived in America for quite a, for several years, and I actually studied the Constitution. I know what the Constitution is all about, and I realized that most of my American friends had no clue. I knew way more than they did, um, and you know, because I used to envy Americans because of the Constitution, and you know, because I came from Canada. Canada is like a colony of the Queen. And, you know, the Constitution is, you know, in comparison, it doesn't have, I mean, it's it's okay, but the American Constitution has this potential. I mean, it, of course, unfortunately, it was it was the Constitution for the people of the United States, and it was the, you know, it was the Republic, which also meant that certain landowners had rights to vote and people that were tenants didn't. And, of course, now with a woke society, that's totally unacceptable, right? Everyone's equal, right? And it's just those same people that get asked, you know, what does July 4th mean? That, that have no clue what it means that are actually having entitled to vote. And that's the scary yeah, part about a democracy, is. which is exactly what Marx wanted. Karl Marx loves democracy because he knows it's really just one step away from communism, you know, because oh. it's the mob rules, right? And it's like everyone yeah. is like, you know, and, and the republic means a certain, they used to have to be, you actually used to have to pay to vote in America. You know, you have to, there was a certain fee of entry, <laughs> which meant that if you can't even afford that, then you shouldn't be voting. And I, I got to say, there's something to it, you know, and there's nothing discriminating about that, because if somebody can't just kind of scrape it together enough to make it important enough to vote, then what do they think about their country? What does it mean to them? Right. You know, and, and all these people in America that are just flooding in across the borders and stuff. We have the same thing over here in, in Germany. We have all these people coming from the Middle East. They get immediate they get immediate uh, social help. They get immediate health care, Medicare. They get pensions. I mean, there's like they. And they figured it out. There's some people that come here and they have multiple families and they collect like up to 50,000. The record that I've come across is 50,000 euros a month. 
Jeez. No, that's not. Some people don't make that in a year in Germany. And these these people coming across the border, they're smart enough to figure this out. They're organized. <laughs> And they bring in people like that and they flood them in and they put them and they're building housing everywhere. And the housing's all state of the art, new with Internet connection, 5G, of course. And uh, they're and they're bringing all these people and putting them there. Who's paying that? I'm paying that. Right. I am the taxpayer here. And they're using my money to do that. And they're, you know, and at the same time, they're sending money over to to that uh, freak Zelensky. Yeah, that that that. Uh, drug addict you know that puppet you know they're yeah. sending him all this money and tanks and arms and all the guys calling for is war right and the evidence was there that many years ago he had a chance to have peace but he never took it he's just a puppet he's a pawn and people don't know it people in america are clued less because no, it's yeah. those people that you ask about july 4th they don't know anything more about zelensky they were just told yeah fight for the ukraine we're yeah, on the ukraine, ukraine side. Yeah. They're not on the ukraine, ukraine side they do yeah. whatever the media tells them to do they yep. do exactly and the poor ukrainians i gotta say they're the ones the, the real ukrainians are the ones suffering but you can believe me that the billionaire uh zelensky he's not suffering one hour and you can imagine all that money that's coming in for tanks and stuff yeah, a lot of it's being siphoned off in his pocket real quick because he's oh, part yeah. of an organized mafia i mean that's See, he was invest under investigation five or six years ago there were headlines about him being the most corrupt government in all of europe you think that's changed all of a sudden? Oh, He's no. like, oh my God, I was corrupt. Oh, I, I, I feel for my people. I've, I've, got right. to save them. I've got to save them from, from uh, Putin. Yes, Putin. He's the evil guy. Putin's right. evil. Putin's evil. You know, I mean, this is like, this is a, how insane, how stupid and childish it is. And yeah. this is the kind of level of people are out there. So they're saying we're awakening. People are awake. Unless they know that, they can tell me more than I know about Zelensky and the awakening freedom movement. I don't buy it. Because you're buying sense. the program, you're feeding your energy, your louche, if you want to call it that. You're giving them your louche, yeah, by buying into their garbage, and that's what it means by looking at the negative stuff. Not because you want to get obsessed by it, you want to look at it because of what it really is. You need to identify all the crap. This is what I was saying earlier. Listen to your thoughts, the the, the mundaneness, the unspectacularness of waking up. It's like identifying all the crap, and then no longer feeding it. It would be over. If, yep. if 300 million Americans decided to never watch NBC ever again and never listen to Joe Rogan or tune into all these people ever again and change their attention elsewhere, guess what? It's over. You don't need to go to war. You don't need to pull out any weapons. It's done. It's fasting in a way mentally. Fasting See, I, from that corrupt system. What hit me in the face, okay? When when I when I pulled up the link that you shared on your Facebook, I was like, okay, I'm gonna check this out. Um, I'm gonna share this. Smack me in the face because I follow these guys. I get a lot of my news and stuff from these guys. But you got Ben Shapiro, Dennis Prager. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know the corrupt. You know what they say, commie for commie for on, on, on the last Cali show you were on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. You know, Gavin Newsom. Okay. Uh, and the one that hit me in the face, okay, and it, and it bothered me, was Glenn Beck. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge, or I was a huge supporter of Glenn Beck because he seemed to be in the right place. You know, Tucker Carlson, how many people follow him? Yeah, millions. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, yeah, but it, it shows you how deep the cognitive dissonance is. Yeah. Um. But it was a gut check for me. I'm like, what What the hell's going on here, you know? And uh, when I saw you, when, when this came up on the Inspired, because you know, I've been following you on Inspired and, and other channels and stuff. And uh, when that came up, it was, a, it was a gut punch. Because, you know, I had respect for, for those guys. Because yeah, I felt they were doing weird. right. And... Then I go through and start reading the, these posts from Bill and Gideon, and they're like, you know, they're they're giving you, you know, seventy percent truth, but the other thirty percent are lies, and it starts, you know, it, it's it's like the puzzle pieces are starting to come together, and so I'm like, I tried to listen to to Beck the other day, and I'm like, I I can't listen to him, I just can't do it, because I don't know what's real, right, exactly. Well, that's a very powerful thing you just described. It's a very, very powerful part of, of, of kind of weaning off of that. 
you realize that you don't you know you can't invest in it anymore because no. it isn't it isn't it's the, the part that bothers me philip has always been that 30 70 ratio i'm so sick of it i don't want to hear 70 percent truth anymore just right. give me all lies then i can identify with that no problem i'll just that's like television right just you know that's all just like you just lies right Right. You know, some of it's predictive, preemptive programming and stuff like that. So, but if you know that, you can have fun with it. But you know, it's just fiction. The problem is people putting themselves out as being truthful. And the other thing is, it doesn't even have to be lies. It's omission. Yep. Right. It's like, what, are, what aren't they talking about? Like a guy like Rogan, when, you know, when, when Elon Musk was on his show, there were like, I think, 30 or 60 million views within a week. Now, imagine if Rogan had spent a month and dedicated a whole month to pulling the 10 most promising inventors of free energy technology on a show and part of the show was dissecting the the the, the way the the energy industry and the oil industry and the banking industry is intertwined to keep us enslaved which it is because that's truth right yep imagine if he did that for one month and he had a hundred million people watching the world would there would be a revolution believe me mm-hmm. and why so why doesn't he do it because he's an agent yep, he's, he's bought and paid for. he's yep. not willing to put his reputation and his cushy income on the line to say you know what if i do this i'm done they're going to get rid of me they're going to slander me they're going to make me into a whatever you know anti-semite or something you know I'm ruining my reputation and uh but you know what It'll go. Out, I'll, I'll go out with a glorious bang, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, that's what they should all be saying. Let's be the glorious bang and go out. Because even you know, Trump when he started tweeting, right? That was something totally new. Like, oh my God, a president tweeting direct to the people. You know how powerful that is. Yeah. So, why didn't he do something constructive with it instead of just ranting and complaining all the time, right? What did he tweet about that was so dangerous that got him shut off? It took years. You know very well that that you have maybe one. If you're a person in that power, you've got one, maybe two, truth bombs, available, and then you're done. But why not take them? How much longer are we going to wait before the courageous leaders and people out there with reputations and millions of followers are going to come out and say, you know what? I can't wait to drop this truth bomb. It's going to cause a major. And then they'll do it and they'll get pushed aside. But some other guy will watch and go you know what (laughs) that was awesome what that guy did i'm gonna do it too and then they do it and then all of a sudden everyone starts doing it it's over this is what i'm saying and why do these people not do it i'm not hiding anything i'm telling you exactly what's in my brain i'm not filtering it i don't want to i the only filter in my brain is i don't want to hurt anybody so i'm careful with the way i say things i don't want to insult somebody i want to introduce them to ideas maybe they're not ready for but I'm not going to ever deny people what I know in my head. Maybe I have to go behind a wall of privacy, like my webinar. There's things in there I can't talk about publicly, you know, that push the buttons. But I do it. I don't hide behind some, you know, I know my days are probably numbered. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do this. I've had this explosion onto the webosphere and blogosphere, and I'm, I'm making the best use I can out of it while I still have the window of time to do it. And uh, but I'm never going to compromise myself. I don't have anybody that I owe anything to. I'm not on a leash. I, I don't have any filter that is put on me by any outside source except my own conscience, uh, my own heart, my own guide, my own compass in terms of what I think is right to bring out uh, that is going to have the most positive effect. That's the only filter, and that's the filter that that's the only filter there ever should be. And so it, I, it bothers me that guys like Rogan and Wilcock, who are obviously very wealthy by now, they've had their run you know they've made their best seller lists and all of their millions of followers and they charge you know whatever x amount for their little uh, to millions of people and they, every time they do a seminar they become another millionaire like a dispensa for example like he does one conference somewhere and he's like another 30 million in the bank cool <laughs> right it's like so effing what yeah what are you going to do with right. 
Is this what it's all? Is this all it's come down to now? Like how much you can stick in the bank? I mean, I, I'm charging money for my webinar, but I'm the money is keeping me going, keeping me right. I, you know, I haven't had a lot of jobs this year, so thank God. I mean, I came up with a brilliant idea to do a webinar, so it's I'm able to get through and I'm able to help some others too. You know that need it, right? So it's like that's constructive, but it's not the, the kind of money that like I just dispense or will. I mean, let's face it, that's like a dream. But, you know, I'm still trying to do something with it because I think everyone needs to do it now. And I'm not trying to make myself better than anybody. I'm not judging anybody. But I'm just telling you, Philip, I'm confused. Why not? Why haven't these people come out earlier with their, you know, force of their crowd and said, you know what, guys, we've talked about this passive truth now for the last five years. And I've been doing it because I've been building towards something because I wanted to surprise the world out of the blue with a real truth bomb. And here it is, you know, because surprise is always an amazing element. <laughs> you know, when you come out of nowhere, like who is this person or what are the, what, what, where did they come up with that? You know? And then it just, it moves, it moves the world. It can, yeah. I've seen it. I've moved it in my little microcosm. So I know it right. works on a macrocosm scale too. You know, I, I guess thinking about what you're saying, these people, you know, Rogan, uh, Beck Shapiro, you know, they've got millions. They don't, they don't care, okay? And whether they're good intention or not, I mean, I had a lot of respect for all of them. You know, Rogan, he was seemed to be open minded, but and he is, no doubt, he is everything he is, Philip. Okay, right. It's not about that. It is about this what they don't do, right? Nothing. But else. Is it? I guess what where, where my my hookup is on it. Do they not realize if they stood for truth, if truly wide open, you know, open the gates, let everything out, put it on the table. Sure, they're going to get hit. They're going to get knocked down by the media, politicians, all this crap. But people, I mean, the media and the politicians don't matter anymore. Mm -mm. No, nobody listens. And, to no. And do they not realize how huge of a following they would have if they laid it out on the table and said, this is truth. This is who came to me. This is the offer I was made. Yeah. Do they not realize that on the other side of it? They're going to get beat to hell, yes. But they're going to get but, their credit in heaven. Right. You know? I mean, sure it, they... it, maybe they're atheists i don't know maybe they don't <laughs> believe be. in life after death maybe they think it's the guy that wins with the most toys at the end is the winner right i mean i don't subscribe to that and i don't i don't know the answer to that i think that's an excellent question that's probably the most critical question anybody can ask of these people it's like do they not see you know and and or they do they not realize that eventually if this thing crumbles we're going to find out anyway so they're right. going to be you know they're going to be lynched there's not a lot of people that are that are as mellow and open-minded as, as we are. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I and I, I would oh, always yeah. try to incorporate the spiritual perspective and give someone a chance to see what they did wrong and fix it. There's other people that would just rather just tear their limbs off. Yes, you know, <laughs> you know I'm not really that could happen, right? Yeah, I really think that's the the as divided as we are here in the United States. I'm sure you see it over there, and 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 it's by design, obviously, but. Yeah. It won't take much to start hanging people in the streets, right. lynching people, dragging them through the streets. It won't take much. There was a poll the other day uh, from The Hill, which is left-leaning. I said, I believe it was The Hill. Uh, like 50% of Americans uh, or 51% of Americans think uh, we're going to have a civil war anytime now. I mean, people are... People are at their limits, and the people feeding them information, whether it be intentional, whether they're being blackmailed into it, whether they're being bribed into it, what have you, I mean, they're, let's just forget CERN and uh, the looking glass, all this other stuff we're talking about, that's, that's on people's websites. They could get on here and they could be talking about that and say, look at this person's website, look at this organization's website, look at this, look at what they're talking about, and pay attention. Well, they may not believe in CERN, or they may not believe in Looking Glass, but the rest of this, I mean, this is, 
this is on mainstream websites for anybody to look at. It's there. Yeah. People need yeah. to just do the research. That's maybe something we should research. Maybe just get a list of websites where they're talking about this and publish it. The websites of the organizations that's actually trying to do this, they're not trying to hide it. Put it out there. Put the website. Put the whole link. This is on their website. This is on their website. This is on their website. We're not crazy. We're not making anything up. This is what they want to do. They've said this is what they want to do. Yeah. These people with the big audiences, they can do that and, sorry, I can't snap my fingers, arthritis, um, and <laughs> boom, like that infinity gauntlet, the whole world goes nuts. Right. It's easy, Mark. Yeah, it's really easy. I, I was watching a talk by Mark Passio a few days ago. Somebody put on a link that they gave me, and uh, I, don't need, I never even heard of this guy before. Turns out he used to be in the Church of Satan or something. And he's broken free, and he was putting he put together a forty five minute talk about <laughs> what's going on, you know everything that that kind of everything I've said, but just you know about as hard ass as you can be. <laughs> and he was one of the things he was saying is that people don't have any skin in the game, and that people aren't willing to make that. As soon as they find out that to wake up and you know to to become active and participate in fixing the, the world and the planet requires that much effort they just uh really yeah, i gotta do all that now and they they don't want to do it they just they 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 cop out yeah and and we need we need more people that are not going to cop out i mean it's it's like i don't know how many countless thousands of millions of hours i sit and read stuff that just because i'm hungry for knowing and how to connect the dots and i stash it away and i have this archive and you know, it's just it's it's been building and building and building over years. I just didn't turn out to be who I am now overnight. But it was this effort, you know, that it took where I didn't go out. I mean, I remember sitting. I used to live in Austria and Salzburg, and I was living on a main road, and I was cutting packing for Mars at night after I got home from a full day working at another job. Uh, and you know, so I you know I and then I'd hear outside the window a bunch of football songs by drunken you know 20 somethings you know two it used to be once or twice a week and then it started getting like three times a week and all of a sudden it was four times a week and i'm like don't these people have jobs like where do they get the money to buy all this alcohol and get drunk and run down the street singing songs like why aren't they sitting at home like me and and, and instead of investing all that and investing it in something that's intelligent to go out there and make a change and i realized that not everybody that people just they're not there you know they're just so I, I and hopefully that has changed now, <laughs> you know, with you would hope with that the benefit of the Q movement and the Trump movement and everything else has spawned more of these, you know, people that are willing to roll up their sleeves and get their hands dirty. But uh, I'm still not seeing the numbers that I would that I would expect to see and, you know, to really make the change. But it really is very, very simple. <laughs> You know, it is very simple to change it. It just means waking up, doing the work, getting out there, getting the message out there, posting the websites, getting the pe people to talk about it, getting in the face of politicians. I was telling Gideon, get me the name of the German politicians. These ones. I gave him a list. And this one mainstream journalist that all the politicians go on, he's the biggest journalist in all of Germany, who calls himself, you know, the, who's like the the journalist of, you know, he's, he's the independent thinker, the critical guy. I want to know their names because I'm going to put it in their faces. I can't wait, right? That's the kind of spirit I am, right? But I mean, it's probably dangerous to do it. But, but hey, I pay my taxes. You know, I'm a good law-abiding citizen. So what can they do? I pay their salary. So they damn well better listen to what I say because they're my employees. And if they don't like it, then they should leave, you know, instead of sitting there collecting 14000 a month to do nothing but read their handies and, and, uh, and you know, pass along a few papers and do a do some pencil pushing yeah i really want to see these people wake up why aren't they why is it us that have to wake up why do why are we the ones that are saying hey guys in germany you know in the german archive you know the one that you you know pay and i pay taxes for there's actually an inventor who invented an engine in 1989 that runs on diesel at 4,000 kilometers per tank did you guys not know that? I mean, I know it. Why don't you know it? And you're talking about you get Greta Thunberg up in our faces. She's shouting at us on how we're polluters and we're carbon sinners. And, and yet 
here in 1989, 30 years ago, 33 years ago, you had a technology made in Germany that would mean that you could run, I mean, I don't even, 4,000 kilometers, I mean, I could run that for half a year almost, right? I mean, I'd fill my tank up once and run that car for half a year. You try doing that with an electric car. Yeah. No, no, I can't. Right? And, and why aren't they doing it? And then there was a guy before him 40 years earlier called Friedrich Lülling, yeah? And he was a guy that invented a magnetic motor. And I have, and there's videos of him in the German archive with a functioning motor and him talking about how he has, you know, he has basically blueprints to set this into production to put it into cars next year. It's ready to go. Guess what? Did that engine come out? No, nope. it didn't come out. And why hasn't it come out? Well, we know why it hasn't come out, but why aren't the politicians, why don't the politicians have the balls to say, you know what, we'd love to have the technology out there, but we're beholden to the oil cartel. And if we rock the boat, the economy is going to crash too fast and we're going to go bankrupt and they're going to cause us all kinds of harm. But tell you what, we'll drip feed out of it. We'll start the prototypes now and we'll tell the banking guys, you know what, there's the green movement. We've got a solution. In 10 years, everyone's going to be running off of free energy devices. There's not going to be any more electricity bills for people. They're going to save all this money per year. Uh, there's not, you know, but they're not going to do it. Nope. Because they're slaves to the system. They're system slaves. They're system junkies. They're liars. They're, they're scam artists. And they're committing fraud by taking my money, pretending they're politicians working on behalf of the people. This is they're what's going on. on, it's, going on by, it's going on for you guys, too, in America. Come yep. on. Nancy Pelosi, oh. that drunken, washed up. <laughs> now you can but say I, it. I don't mind. Biden, what's that guy? Like? What's <laughs> he said it. I have a business being the president of the most powerful country in the right. world. The guy can't even put ten and fifty-three together. You know, if 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 that's not proof that he is nothing but a puppet, I don't know what is. You know, you, I don't know what is. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> it's like I had intelligent friends of mine that are Demo Democrats going like, "All right, Biden," you know. I'm like, man, just like when Obama got in. I mean, I almost got fooled by Obama, too, I have to admit. He's very well. Obama, for me, was the turning point where I realized even <laughs> even that guy was so full of shit. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I obviously, I mean, people know that I don't trust this system. Um, I, I truly believe that we need to revert back to our constitutional system here in the United States, you know, as a republic. It, 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 you know, going back to what you said earlier about the democracy and all that, that drives me up a wall when people, well, we're, we live in a democracy. No, we you do know, not. We never understand. Have. You do now, but you never had to. Right. You were given and, a glorious starting point. The Constitution yeah. isn't perfect, but it's way better than anything ever out there that, that existed. Yeah. yeah it, it drives me up a wall. But... I don't know. It it bugs me, you know, because obviously the politicians are beholden to themselves or their masters because there there's none that are willing to help and step up and say and try to stop this. No. Follow the money. Yeah. Exactly. Follow the money. All you gotta and, do. You, know, you, got, uh, you can change it. You can you can change it by getting yeah. in their faces and non stop. All the Joe Rogans of the world non-stop on their asses constantly bringing up the subjects constantly talking about the real truth the real great reset what's coming the real agenda 21 having guests on their show every night talking about another angle of it another post another side of this despicable plan and, and the alternatives side by side you know hey they're talking about this but we have this you know you could do this if you, you could do this very very quickly with if all these rogans got out there and said, you know, we're going to go lockstep in the positive sense and we're going to, we're just going to blow them into oblivion with truth bombs. They're going to run, hightail it for the, for Saudi Arabia or someplace, you know, because right. they're going to be wanted men. If people see them, if, 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 uh, if Justin Castro, I mean, Trudeau goes down the street <laughs> and anywhere in Canada right now, people throw tomatoes at him. I've heard. Yeah. The guy yeah, is not well anywhere. He has to hide behind his, secret service guys that the taxpayers pay money for that he hides behind because he's a coward but he's, he's so a slave he's to another so system that's what it's about 
<laughs> and, you know, he can't go anywhere. He's a wanted man. And all those guys, believe me, they're going to hightail it. All the bankers are going to be gone, man. When the lists get published with their names and that they knew and didn't do anything, what do you think is going to happen? They're gone. It's the peaceful revolution. They're just going to hightail it. The next plane or the private plane or whatever, while they st still can fly. It's funny. I remember I, I, uh, this is an interesting topic, but I was at a, I met with some people and uh in greece and we were talking about elon musk and everyone thinks he's this you know like the batman you know guy the cool like clark <laughs> Kent, whatever you know the savior iron man whatever and uh they were at a conference they were giving a they, this is the kind of caliber of people that give a conference that give a presentation at a conference where people like musk and branson are sitting in the rows right in front of them and the idea came up about what to do about you know this coming situation in the world and their answer shocked the hell out of them it was all about they were worried that they were going to still be able to get their secret service people to cap to drive them over in their private car to their fleet so they could get off planet as soon as before they before they were lynched that was their biggest <laughs> worry that was their biggest <laughs> worry so you know where their mindset is at yeah they need to be they worried don't care about you no they're yeah. not out here on the blogosphere caring about you, putting their reputation on the line. They should be. And you know what? A Musk would even be a hundred times more here of a hero. Oh, yeah. He could you do know, so he much. Live to tell, he may not live to tell the story, but he went out in a flash and he would set the, he would be the, 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 the martyr on steroids. And we See, know that life isn't over after you leave the physical body anyway, but right. most of these people are atheists. That's why they're afraid. Yep. Yeah. See, and, and I think it just hit me. You know, was it a week, two weeks ago when the, the former Japanese prime minister was assassinated? Right. I think assassinations have already begun. I don't know. I, I, I have no basis. I, I'm just, you know, spewing. But the more people that stand up, the more assassinations are going to happen, even especially high profile. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I always think, you know, like, what, where, where are the enlightened assassins? Right. That have had enough. <laughs> They've collected right. their millions too, and now they're saying, okay, you know what? It'd be very easy just to sit on a roof for a week and wait for that one guy to come out, and you just, you know, see you later. Yeah. And you go to another location, and the next day, out comes the George Soros ones. They're gone, and you know, it wouldn't take long before all of them started looking over their shoulders, going, "Well, what's going to happen next? Am I on my yeah. next in line?" Right. I'm not condoning violence, but I'm saying, you know, that would be an easy way to get rid of it. And one of the things that Mark Passio was saying in his speech is like all the freedom movement people, why are they always afraid that there might not be some violence in the rebellion? It's like, oh, it's got to be peaceful and happy. We're going to, you know, but maybe it isn't. If you look back on, you know, the, uh, the history of America, the revolution wasn't a passive, peaceful one. Right. Yeah, why should it be any different anywhere else? Why why should these people get it? They have guns. You think they're going to stop shooting on you when you threaten their little paradise? Right. They're going to pull them out in a second. So Bill the idea that we have to do it how... peaceably, yeah. maybe we need to reconsider that. We just need some really excellent assassins to do the job. You know, we'll pay them. <laughs> you know, and, and goodbye, George Soros, and goodbye, you know, Angela Merkel. And sorry, you won't be retiring in that villa. You know, I guess you you know your days are up. You did your job. Thanks. You woke us all up. We'll give you a medal when we're on the other side. <laughs> Bill and I are always saying if something happens to us, uh, it wasn't an accident. Right. <laughs> Look, you got to be willing to put your life on the line for things that matter. Because if you don't, eventually your life, your way of life is going to be over anyway. So you might as well put up a fight. Yeah. I mean, that, I don't want, I, I, I hate pain and I don't want to fight either, but I mean, like, geez, you know, it's, it's like, uh, if, if the door ring doorbell rings and there's a bunch of white coats out there with, you know, with the latest vaccines, when, when this, when the reset happens, I'm not going to be happy about that. Yeah. I mean, going back, you know, when I first saw all this stuff that you, you, you shared and, and, and really started digging in, my first thought was my kids. Yeah, I don't want them growing up with this. No. You know, this is the hill I'm willing to die on. If it means a chance. 
You know, I mean, I'm not a violent guy. I'm capable of violence, no doubt about it. But I'm not. It should only ever be a last resort, Philip. And this is kind of, we're at kind of a last resort right now. On a society level, this is the last resort. This is the last generation of real human beings. That's something that, that's been coming up now. I don't know if you heard that in the last show or the last shows. I did. This, is something, this realization is this is the biggest realization we have to face. We could be looking at the end of human civilization in this generation. A generation is 20 years. The yeah. plans of the Schwabsters is to have implemented their plan in 20 years. They want to have it behind them in 20 years. 2030 is not 20 years. Right. And uh, so they are looking to to get this stuff done. So we are a, we're facing that exact existential crisis right now. What are we going to do about it? Right. Are we just you know, going to walk them out of existence? <laughs> <laughs> Woke up, man. Woke up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better woke up. I, I think you killed Phil. Oh man, that was funny. I think you just coughed. Me I love it. <laughs> oh, I've been fighting this cold for like two weeks now. I'm I'm bad over it, but <laughs> you're absolutely right, though. I mean, that seems like to be the answer anymore. Let's get woke. Yeah, and it drives me up a wall. It really does. And... You know, and the funny thing is, all these things, like in their essence, there's nothing wrong with them. Being woke really means just being courteous to your fellow man and respectful. Right. In the, in the essence, I have no problems with that. I have problems with card-carrying violent people that are pushing an agenda and you know it's been infiltrated to distract and to, to cause chaos. That's where I draw the line. But I'm a woke person from nature. I respect all people, all whatever they, if they're, whatever they are, you know, I don't care. They're, they're a human being, they're a soul and a spirit. And, you know, the, the everyone is, is allowed respect, but the problem is, They've turned it into a disruptive movement. Yep. And, you know, I, but you know why? Because people have not become sensitive to their own inner wokeness before wokeness was thrust on them. <laughs> it's like any laws, right? I mean, like some of the laws that are out there that are passed, they're no brainers. Why did there have to be a law passed for that? Why? Because people are so stupid and selfish. They allowed it to get to the point where a stupid law had to be passed. So you have all these statutes in America. They're actually called statutes. They're not even real common law laws. They're statutes it means they're like regulations, which are enforced by, you know, by tickets and, and penalties and stuff. Right. And but they're all like they're they are no brainers. But if you're an unconscious society, which is, you know, which has been distracted by selfish, stupid uh, pursuits of materialism and commercialism, then what do you expect? Then someone's right. going to come along with a movement called the woke movement and bat you over the head with it constantly. <laughs> you know, I guess that's my biggest thing is, is with this whole movement. I don't I, personally, I don't care. I don't care how you feel or I don't care your beliefs. I mean, sure, I'll respect them. But don't try to force it down my throat because I don't believe the same as you do. Right, right. If you're not hurting me or mine or costing me money, I really don't care. Exactly. And that's what's enshrined in your constitution. It's written right, right there hundreds of years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? I mean, the blueprint was already there. Yes. You've got to follow it. Yeah, it's, I don't know. You've got to make some kind of change. Well, you've been infiltrated by communists and Bolshevists. And, you know, you've had, I mean, you've had the odds against you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, the thing is, you just have to be wise up to it and, 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 and talk about it. And like I said, it's I, I really do think it's easy, but it does require this celebrity power boom, like going out there nonstop, relentlessly. And I bet you in six months, you'd have a total, you'd have a new earth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In 20 years, we could totally uh, be off our dependency on fossil fuels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Without any trouble at all, the technology exists. Uh, we could use uh, a different style of nuclear reactor to actually use up our nuclear waste instead of storing it. Yeah, yeah. There is an inventor in Germany. I just saw somebody sent me a video of a politician in Germany. God bless her for coming out. 
there's an invention in Germany that actually that actually uses up nuclear waste and produces clean energy. It's yeah, amazing. Uh, it exists. It exists now. Or, and they're not, they're, they're winding plant. down all the nuclear plants because they want to put up those stupid windmills that kill birds and never degrade. They end up polluting the environment for like centuries yeah. to come. Useless. And same with those silicon, those stupid, stupid silicon chips all over the place. You drive in Germany down the highway between Munich and, and where I am, and like you pass three or four of these stupid silicon fields. What a waste of field. And what, you could what, have green I, grass and you could have trees and forests. No, we got silicon here. And that whole production cycle of silicon is so toxic. Yeah. Nobody's talking about that. No, because it's not the agenda. Right. No. It doesn't fit their uh it, it doesn't fit their uh, uh their movement. No. I mean that that's the biggest thing, you know, is they want to talk clean injury and, and and the thing, I mean, with, with Biden coming out with this new uh, national emergency for climate change, he took over the role of dictatorship. I mean, yeah. that's what's crazy. People don't realize that. He, he's trying what, to be a dictator. Absolutely. Everything, and I'm not a died in the wool Trump supporter. Don't take me wrong. But that's everything they said Trump was going to do. He is doing, and they're all for it. Oh yeah, that's what kills me. Is that they're they're so they're they're they can't see the forest for the trees. Y you know, I mean, it just it blows my mind. And you know, with these windmills, we have tons of them up up here, especially just a little bit. You know, I don't know, fifty miles north of us or what have you. And they're everywhere. And you drive by, and half of them aren't even turning. Right. No, half of them are broke. They can't fix them because the federal subsidies have run out on them. So they're going to end up in a landfill somewhere. All the oil that's packed in them, I forget how many hundred gallons of oil are in there lubricating it. That's yeah. all running out into the ground. I mean, how, how is that better? The worst part of it, Mark, is that some of the ones that aren't turning are deliberately shut off because there's conflicting supply contracts with that are long-standing with you know other energy companies that do not want that energy supply because it infringes on their contractual agreements so they actually deliberately shut them off <laughs> it's like yeah. they just sit there for no reason whatsoever wasting money wasting time decaying well their whole profit comes from the subsidies yeah they can't make money on them otherwise right so you know alone in our conversation here in the last hour we've covered probably five or six topics here that if they were being discussed in the mainstream, alternative mainstream even, relentlessly for the next month, yeah, we'd have a changed world. We would. Guaranteed. Because yeah. a lot of people would start waking up going, yeah, man, yeah, that's true. I know that. I always knew something was wrong. And even those people who aren't conspiracy theorists, those straight moms and pops with families that yep. don't want to go there, they'll be going, yeah, man, absolutely. Finally someone standing up right they would just like when trump came in he gave people hope yeah right finally someone's in there giving giving at least a glimmer of hope and it shows you even the little bit of leash that trump had to make change he made a lot of change in america yeah. mm -hmm. he can't right he just if he had no chains on him and no limits on him just imagine what else could be accomplished very right. very quickly very quickly i'm totally convinced look even when COVID happened and they had us all in lockdown what did they tell us? Wow, the carbon emissions have, and the whole the oceans have changed. Like in the course of a month, we've already we've got dolphins in Venice. That's never happened in the last century. What? It took a month. OK, so just imagine if we get rid of all that toxic stuff that we are sold on needing and we replaced it with clean stuff, which exists already. Yeah, man, we would have a world that would be completely transformed and it would cost us nothing. We, we wouldn't have to pay for energy, which is free. Right. That would transform the households of so many American people that are just paying the electric bill every month. You know, and especially in, if you're in a hot part, you got a, you got the air conditioning on. And if you're in a cold part, you got the heating going all the time. Imagine if that was free and that free yeah, internet and free yeah, telecom. And you fun. suddenly had, you know, a, a form of wireless communication that wasn't toxic to your body because that exists too. 
right? Yep. Wow, imagine that, right? It would take about five or 10 years of gradual implementation, phasing out the old toxic and phasing in the new and clean so that the people that are in those industries don't go jobless overnight, but you say, look, there's a plan. First of all, you won't have as much of an overhead every month, so you won't need to work maybe as much as you do now. Uh, or you'll find something that will be in the new sectors, in the new technology sectors. Yeah, But it's like this requires a plan. Where are the leaders, the American politicians, with which have a plan, an oversight, that understand all these things? Like, yeah, there's these 10 technologies, which I know if we put in 50 billion over the next five years, we'd have one. We'd have one working. So, yep. what is 50 billion? That's what the arms industry takes every month, right? I mean, or, or something. I don't know what the exact figure is, but it's probably something like that. Yeah, but where's the guy with the plan? Where's the vision? I can think of it, but I'm not, it's like, I'm, I'm just a regular Joe. If I right. can think of it, where are the brilliant, you know, the PhDs that have gone through, you know, that are all the brains in America, where are they with the, with the plan, with the courage to say, you know what, here's the plan. Here's my not. idea. You got a better one? Okay. Let's yeah, hear they don't it. want to lose their reputation. Right. Yeah. If you listen to Ralph Ring talk about his experience going into the universities when he was told about, he was trying to tell them how to use magnetics back in, I think, when was that, the 50s, 60s, something like that. Uh, and the guy at the university, it's an interesting story. You should look that up on the internet. He, he tells, he talks about it at a conference, one of his last appearances. They didn't want to hear it. They got money from the government to do this experimentation. And basta. They didn't want to explore a new territory because they'd be out of a job. They wouldn't get the grant. Right. Yeah. It's it's a it's it's criminal, but it's it's, it it's laughable if it weren't so if it weren't so painful to watch, right? Especially now that we're in this, what do we call it? We're in the critical zone now. We're in this yep. existential crisis of humanity right now. Yeah. We don't have, have the fifty money. years to work this problem out. If we don't work the problem out in the next, I you know, a couple of years. We're toast. We're going yep. transhumanist, folks. The wires yeah. are coming in. <laughs> Do you? You know, you're, you're gonna, you're not gonna have a job. You're gonna get a, a basic universal income because you won't have a job. You won't be qualified for anything. No. Artificial intelligence is gonna take all of your jobs away. Jordy Rose talked about this in 2012. How the the artificial intelligence that they're gonna implant in workable robot machines that look like humans is so far advanced. It's not gonna do your job, not just better. It's going to do your job a hundred times better than you do it now. And guess what? It doesn't cost anything. Right. You think your job safe securities on, you know, you think you have a job in 10 years, people, you can forget it. Accountants, lawyers, all of it. Forget it. Machines are going to do it a hundred times better and a hundred and, and for cheap. One yeah, time fee, it? bingo, no complaints, happy every day. No holidays needed. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, what is it? The, uh, is it the That's IBM? That's reality, my friends. That is reality. Yeah. It's not science fiction. This is coming. It's I think it's here. It is. It's already here. I'm just here. trying to make it easy for people. <laughs> it already is here for people. Yeah, it is. <laughs> our, our viewers don't care. Yeah. Um, She's great. Isn't it the IBM AI? I can't. Watson? Does that sound right? Is it Watson? Watson I'm thinking yeah. of? Yeah, that's where they are predicting they're using it in the medical field to predict cancer and things like that. And it has a higher accuracy rating than human doctors do. Yeah, they have them now in operations. They use them in operations. They're way better surgeons yeah. than a surgeon is. What are you going to do out there, surgeons listening to this right now? You're going to be out of a job. You'll just be managing the machine. But they'll only, one of you, they'll only need one of you for all the machines. So the rest of the hundred of you in that office are gone. What are you going to yeah. do? Write a book about what? Who's well, going to care? Right. The way it, the way it sounds, I can't remember the guy's name. He's, he's with the uh, World Economic Forum. We played a clip of him here a while back talking about how humans are, or the Yuval uh, the, Harari. Yuval Harari. Yes, that's it right there. Where he talks about how they're going to control people through drugs and video games. Yeah. With you know, and and I believe it because I can he's see right. Meta. He's right. If yes. we do nothing, he's right. You want to prove him right? Do nothing. Absolutely. He knows it. You think this guy's stupid? People hate him. They say he's like, you know, like on Alex Jones, right? Uh, he's evil. He's the devil. We'll do something, <laughs> Alex. Right. Where are you right now with this right. stuff? 
Where are you? Why are you bit blocking it? Fact is, Yuval Harari is just calling it the way he sees it. Yes. And he's on the cutting edge. Sorry. He knows what's coming because he sees it. He doesn't see the op. He doesn't see any resistance. Where's no. the resistance? A few people are going to come out there with some guns? I don't think so. They send yeah. a swarm of drones. They make a few examples, get the cameras there, make it dramatic, like wag the tail, wag the dog. Yep. I mean, come on. They've got this down. They've been making films in Hollywood for over 100 years. They know how to guide people and steer people and mislead people. So we're past this. It's clear. We have to take action now. We can't wait. We have to get out there. We have to get, come on, Joe Rogan, get active. Get some balls. Right. Yeah, get some balls. Get a man. Be a man. That's what it means to be a man. It doesn't right. mean to be out there and, you know, hustling women. Women right. have a role in this too. You know, and there's yeah. a divine feminine and the divine male. We need to come together. Feminine, the feminine aspect is very important as well. A lot of women, I'm noticing on Facebook, I get not way more women friending me right now, even though I'm bringing all this hardcore stuff out. You know why? Because women are interested in this stuff. They're, women are more intellectual. They can see this stuff. They can feel where it's going. Because women are the bearers of civilization. They right. know they're, they're carrying the future generation. And guess what? They won't be carrying it anymore. And they can feel it. That's why women are very, very important. But that's the difference between, you know, just being macho man and being the divine masculine and the divine right. feminine pulling together and saying, OK, it's not about who's stronger physically, who's stronger mentally. Both have unique characteristics the others don't have. So combine them. Right. And, and what do we have? We have this whole LGBTQ focus right now. It's all about non-gender. You know, it's like all about it's, it's just distorting. It's yep. distorting what it means to be divine feminine, divine masculine. I was going to say that, that that's why the attack on, you know, why men are being so emasculated right now. Yeah. They're not teaching them what it means to be a, a mask, like the right kind of divine masculinity. They're not teaching them that. But they should be. But instead, they put in this LGBTQ movement. Okay, nothing against gay and lesbian people I, you know like i said i'm totally the woke most woke person inside i accept anybody the way they are i have friends you know that talk to me and stuff i'm like they're human beings come on yeah right and, and you have to accept them but it's like the problem is when it becomes this obsessive movement that distorts reality it's makes totally. itself makes a minority of people the priority of the majority yep. that's when you know it's not right should there be laws giving them equal? Yeah, why not? But why make a make this should happen on its own? <laughs> it's, and it, it, by an awakened society, an enlightened society would see these things. But we're blocking that enlightened society from happening by all these imposters. Yeah, the BLMs and whatever they're called. I don't care. They're all yeah. just distorting sirens, bringing out garbage into the world to distract us, like the people bringing in garbage truth stuff truth that we don't need right now right. we need certain actionable truth out there what we're talking about right now is actionable truth yeah absolutely i mean you see, you see all this i've got some good you know mark and i both i mean we've got some good podcast buddies um that, that are big in the ufo field i mean and, and that's great that i mean they do great work in there they have some amazing guests on and have some great conversations but it's a dis to me it's a distraction. I enjoy I enjoy the conversation about it. Don't get me wrong. I, I love that kind of conversation. Uh, like with Carrie, you know, the other night, uh, with Carrie in Fields with us the other night, we talked about going in the astral realm and and how she commented on uh, going into CERN in the astral plane, and all that was it was such an amazing conversation. And I think that topic has something to do with what we're talking about now. But I think. UFOs, UAPs, whatever the, the, the lingo is right now, is a distraction. It's part of the new world, Philip. That's the new earth stuff. Okay, UFOs are going to become visible when we elevate our consciousness. Otherwise, they would have landed already. Right. <laughs> if they would be shot down, enslaved, put in prison, interrogated, stolen from, you know, they'd be here. But they right. won't. They're not going to come. And they can't save us because we have free will. We can we have the free will to screw it up <laughs> or well, we to do, make absolutely. it up. And if we become an enlightened society, they're going to land. 
They're going to say, right. you know what? It's safe here. It's time. It's probably in right. the bow plan. J.J. Hertog talks about that. This is bow plan for humanity. We have a destiny as celestial beings to rise to the next level. Quantum le evolutionary leap is what people call it. We have that in our destiny. It's supposed to happen. The universe wants to make it happen. It wants to. It, the universe wants to evolve. Why wouldn't it? Why would the universe want all these dark people to crush right. us down to go back into the you know zombie zone? No, it doesn't. The universe wants to become a conscious, more creative entity because we are part of the universe. We're one and one and the same. So it wants. So it's in our plan, and we will do it. But we have to. Again, we have to know about that. We have to make the effort. We have to. Those things that that she's talking about are those those capabilities that we have they're all going to come the remote viewing the teleportation tele the telepathy all these amazing things are right there before us but they're not what we should be focusing on right now we should we can think about them in terms of how we want to envision envision the new world but we can't obsess about just one thing we have right. we have several things to do at the same time so instead of you know i mean it's amazing if you stop watching television it is. Or reading newspapers and stuff like that. That just keeps you down. Amazing how much time you have. You can spend two hours a day visualizing the new earth and two hours a day researching the cabal and, and identifying where you've, you've been misled and what to shut, what canal to shut off. What part of the you know information feed that you've been locked into and feeding from is useless. You can think about it. You can find that out. You can research that and you can cut yourself free from it. And open right. up a whole new level of freedom. Doesn't take much time. Easy to do, but it requires effort. We don't have we can't wait for the Savior. Savior's no. never gonna come. Sorry. Jesus ain't coming back to save you. Jesus is there cheering us on, and he's told us what we can do, and that we can do even greater things. I'm sure. But he can't come in and fix the problems for us, because that would be counterproductive. Right. We were given free will. Otherwise, we never would have been given free will. It makes sense. I mean, that's kind of the first time I've heard it put that way. I mean, but, but it makes sense to me. Um, I don't know. Is is it? I've been seeing, you know, kind of doing some research and things. I've been seeing a lot about how we have two Earths. I don't know if you're familiar with all that. Um. And how we're in a spot with, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering it, but we're in a spot with different, a different spot in the in the in the galaxy or in the you know, to where the two Earths are going to split. And do you think? I mean, because I truly believe we're in a battle, uh, a spiritual battle, you know, of good versus evil. I mean, textbook, you know. Do you think the the bad is trying to keep the good from transitioning to the the fifth dimensional earth or, or whatever that is? No, I think it's the opposite. I think the bad is trying to push the good to make the transition. Hmm. They're putting the pressure on us to wake up. They're making it more and more obvious for us to connect, to disconnect from our wrong ways of thinking and our wrong ways of being and to realize our full potential. That's what I see. I don't see them as being there strictly for the sake of pulling us down. I see everything as a unit, as the entire universe is a consciousness. So even the evil people have a role. At the end of Packing for Mars, there's a telephone call from the universe. And it says, and it's actually George Nouri. <laughs> Sweet. But yeah, it, yeah, I should check it out. It's funny as hell. But it's saying that. It's saying, like, we weren't here to destroy you. We're here to push you to make the jump, and to, to make that evolutionary leap. Because without us making that leap, they can't make the leap either. We, and the, if we don't make that leap, it's like the timeline works like this. It's a consensus timeline, Philip. It's like a garden. If you have a bunch of seeds planted, right, and some plants are more sensitive than others, and then there's the ones that, you know, they'll grow almost no matter what, right? And the the timeline we're on now is like that is that that plant that that will probably survive no matter what. And it keeps growing and growing, and most people are putting their fertilizer and trying to make it grow. 
and all the other plants around it, you know, they're getting some attention, but they're starting to thin out. They're getting weaker and weaker because people are finding it easier to just deal with the one plant. And if you think of that timeline as that plant, that's the consensus timeline. If we don't start planting the other timeline, then that consensus timeline eventually will crowd out all the other plants in the garden. There will not be a split where we go, I don't believe that. I think that, okay, yeah, we're undestru we're indestructible beings. We're, we're creator beings. Some of us have evolved to the point where we might, might just make a jump to another dimension or another location. But the majority of people, they're going to be stuck on that consensus timeline because they didn't take action. And eventually all options are crowded out and there's only one option that prevails. And that's the timeline that these people are wanting to get us on. And are they doing it to keep us down? No, they're doing it because they see it. They see their role and it's logical. It's working. And uh, they don't think about these things that we think about. You know, most of them are atheists. You know, they just, you know, they're scientists. They don't believe in a spirit inhabiting something. Right. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to put their consciousness inside of a robot and think that's going to give them eternal life inside of a hard drive with no matter how glorious the simulation is, they're still only artificial within a 3d 4d bubble. They'll never be able to transcend like we can. We are living outside of those dimensions. Yeah. But if we don't wake up and see that they're going to try, you know, they're just going to go what's natural. They're going to make that work and make it happen. <laughs> and, and so the consensus timeline will win. And I'm sure it has before. And you probably go through all the universe's ca cases where artificial intelligence won and organic life died. Hmm. So are we going to be the next death of organic life out there? Or are we going to take the, our power back and fulfill the destiny that we have coming? Is that everyone is watching and waiting for us to do this evolutionary quantum leap. And I have faith that we're going to do it. I'm not going to give up. I'm never going to give up even to the very end, I'm still going to believe that it's going to work because I, I don't want the other timeline to work. I want the, I want this amazing organic timeline to manifest and I'm going to shout about it as long as I can until they shut me down and uh, until I leave this physical body. And, and then at least I know after wherever I landed, I go, well, you know, I was one of the A team tried to make it work out. I guess we didn't, we weren't very popular. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you because it's not in me to lay down. It's not. Um, I feel that we are under attack. And, and like I said, I think it's a spiritual it's a spiritual battle. And it's going to take everybody to get online. It's going to take, like you said, getting the word out. I mean, we don't have a huge following by any stretch of the imagination. But I believe we are here for this purpose. You know, we were, you know, it was, I can't remember the exact quote, but, you know, we were born for times such as these. I truly believe that. And I intend to see this through. Whether they shut me down, whatever. I mean, because if we keep pushing this, eventually they probably will, even though I don't have a huge following. But I have to try. Yeah, just, just like you. And you never know who you're going to hit on one of your shows who's listening. It might just be right. that dead that will go, wow, yeah, man, that fired me up. And they'll go out and do something that'll, that'll change the world. You don't know that. That could happen. Right. Right. And, 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 as, and as, you know, as doom and gloom as this all sounds, I mean, it really does. If you really jump in, and I'll share the link on the, on the Facebook group. And I'll put the link in the uh, the show notes. If you go down this link, you're gonna get hit, and you and you're gonna you're gonna get down. I mean, oh yeah, it's depressing. <laughs> it is. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. Yeah, but it, as bad as it sounds, I'm hopeful. I'm at peace. If if that makes sense, I don't. I mean, it, it's hard to make sense of that, especially with that information that's in there. I'm at peace with it. And I know what I feel, or I should say, I feel I know what I need to do. And that's to keep pushing this and to keep getting it out. Um, 
and I think the more and more people that reach out and share this information, sure, it, you're going to look like you're crazy. But if you want to see the truth, go to this information. Go find this information. I'm going to share this website real quick. But it's just, it's mind-blowing. It's hard to, it's, it's hard to wrap your, your, your mind around it. Especially because we've all been conditioned. Now is the time. Now is the time to make up your mind. Now is the time to act. Because for one, I don't want my children to live through this. I don't want my children to grow up in, in a world where they can't be kids. Where they can't be free to make their own decisions. They can't be free to, to chase their dreams, you know, like we all grew up doing. And I'm not done chasing my dreams yet, as I'm sure you, know, you guys aren't. Now's the time to act. Now's the time to rise up and fight. You know, they say that, you know, courage is acting even though you're fear, you know, you're full of fear. And that's what we have to do. We have to find the courage to step forward. Find your way to stand up. You're going to be beat up. You're going to be talked down to. You're going to be told you're a liar. You're going to be told you're crazy. To me, that doesn't matter. Because I know what I'm fighting for. So find your reason. Find your reason to fight. That's the only thing. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing I could tell anybody. Find a reason to fight. And like I said earlier, it's not in me to lay down. And I don't have any intention to lay down. Frank, do you have any closing thoughts where people can find you? Anything like that? I think we've covered everything. Um, if people want to reach out to me, I'm more than happy. Go to my website, frankjacob.com. There's a contact form at the bottom of that website. It's not very complex. It's a very simple website. Uh, at the top of the website, there are some links that bring you to our films. If you want to watch some of the films that Tanya Maidenford and I have produced, Packing for Mars, Solar Revolution, Klaus Donner Chronicles, all these films are related to the topics that we're talking about in certain ways, especially Solar Revolution. I've got to watch that one. And um, yeah, so you can go there and there's a sign up. You can go to my cyberhive.tv site where I have the that hosts my webinar and there's a newsletter you can sign up for there and you can just join even just the community and add your two cents to to a conversation um and other than that no i just um that's about it i i just hope people uh get active and get inspired and get courageous and that we rock the planet together we're all in this together man Win, lose, Thanks or draw. For having me. Absolutely, man. Like I like I said last time, you are more than welcome anytime. Anytime you need to share something new, man, just reach out. We'll make room. I don't mind at all. Um with that being said, folks, uh I know we dropped a lot on you this afternoon. Uh, thank you, Frank, for the conversation. It was a great conversation. Um do us a favor, check us out, support the show, what if tomorrow, uh media dot com. That has all of our affiliates on it. It's got uh, Duke Cannon, EMP Shield, My Patriot Supply, uh, which we didn't even touch on any of that stuff because there's so much information to be passed. But you guys know the drill. If you're listening and you're 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 you've listened for a while, you know the drill. You know what's going on. Um, I've got some new T-shirts I'm designing for the merch, so so feel free to look back in back in uh, now and again just to check and see. Um, so help us out, support the show, help us take on this fight. Um, because I, I think we're all going to need to pull together. I mean, Mark and I are huge on community right now, whether it be a local community or even an online community. Because, like I said, we're all in this together, and it's up to us to make it through it. Um, with that being said, folks, thank you so much. Frank, again, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next episode. Good night, folks. Cheers.